Everybody look alive. We're on television. Uh-oh. All Hold over the on. world. I'm not ready. Okay, I'm ready. There it is. That's all I got. I'll give you more time. Mm-hmm. Take your time, huh? I have a really good memory of uh, putting on makeup once when they accidentally came to me. I was still, I was doing that number, doing a little lash. That's and it. I was like, good morning, good morning, everyone. Fluff that head. Let's get this thing going. Go ahead. Do it, do it. That's Kelly Sutton. There's Charlie Maddows, Annie Nye, and Super Coop, Aaron Cooper in the studio and in master control at the Grand Ole Opry House, who's really that distance uh, suits him just fine he to not have to hang around us, us too, too much <laughs> in real life. His name is Jeff Roberts, and he's making it happen in Master Control all over the world now on our Circle streaming platforms, which you can find at circlecountry.com, and you can link, too, to the one that works for you. And Circle now is available in your app store. The great thing about it, if you see something and you just want to can't get enough, want to see it again, or, or you missed it, and you just go back and get it for 24 hours on demand. Mm-hmm. And you are talking, we got special guests. The Reeves brothers just rolled through. They've got a resident at Chiefs, yeah. Bar- Barbara Fairchild for the radio audience. Uh, the TV folks missed her, but uh, she was by with brand new music. She's got a new album called All My Cloudy Days Are Gone. 38 years it's been in the attic or in storage. Right, how cool is that? And Country Music Hall of Famer Don Williams produced the doggone thing. For people who are like me and are borderline hoarders and keep all of those things, that's a terrible story to tell because then you're like, I can't throw anything out. There might be some gold. In that box okay. over there. Define borderline hoarder in your life, ma'am. I can still move through my house. <laughs> you have a path? <laughs> Down in the basement, I do. <laughs> if you move one thing, it's kind of like Jenga, like it all might come down. <laughs> Sounds like my office upstairs, which Rebecca is on me every day of my life. It's today the day. It's today, it's the, today day. the day. You're like, you're today's gonna... not the day. Sorry, <laughs> babe. <laughs> not feeling like, it. <laughs> no, I can still make it through my path. So we're today's good. not the day. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay, so entertainment, let's tell you a little bit about it. Reba is signing on a new beauty campaign. Super excited about that. Gwen Stefani, not only is she reuniting with her old band, no doubt, she's also riding a tractor. Those two things seem like they shouldn't be in the same sentence, but they are. And we have a new exhibit that's happening, not at the Country Music Hall of Fame. This time it's going to be at the Ryman. And a very special guest is the narrator. And it's not one of us, which I'm a little sad about. But we've got that and more coming up. (laughs) This is Coffee Country and Cody. The Reeves brothers are back on the show, and that's a good thing. And they got a steady gig here in town that Kelly Sutton was a part of the other night. You were at Chiefs, I was. and so were they until two o'clock this morning. Yeah. I was not there until two a.m. <laughs> I can vouch for Kelly; she wasn't she there. Was I really, there. <laughs> it was so funny when I walked in. So the very first floor of Chiefs, when you walk in, there's a stage, and I look up, and I'm like, I know those guys. Why do I know those guys? And then I look over, and I'm like. I think that's the Reeves brothers. And then I see Scott, and there he is. He's leaning up against the wall over there. And I walk over, and I said, what are you doing in here? And he said, my boys are here. This is their new gig. And, and it was like the VIP night. They were there from day one. Now he's not feeling well this morning, or he would be in studio, Scott would be. But we have Cole, black hat, for those of you watching all over the world, mm-hmm. and Matt, brown hat. So what, what time did the set start last night? Uh, 10 30. Yeah. All right. So, over the course of four hours, because you guys have done enough gigs, you can read a crowd pretty well. What does the crowd change from 10 30 oh. to 2 30? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, we run them off pretty quick with our old country. Oh. Yeah. As uh, soon as the pedal still hit, by about 100. Yeah. About 100. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. People get. They get happier at this. It yeah. They get, pretty, Let's just put they it that get way. pretty wild. Can yeah. I quote Ray Wiley Hubbard at a time like this? Uh-huh. I'm going to drink. Till I see double, and then take one of you home. <laughs> <laughs> With Paula Nelson and Elizabeth Cook, you can find it wherever you download or stream your music. <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, we didn't take anybody home, but, but you we did, did play a lot of country music. You played. You, you yeah. talk about traditional country, old country, and I, I read a great quote where you guys would fit in perfectly on a jukebox that had Charlie Rich, David Allen Coe, and Merle Haggard on it. So I know for you... That's a great compliment. It, it sure is. is. Yeah, that's what we try to do, and we've cl- we quickly found out down there on Broadway, Broadway that we're like the last people. Somebody, a bunch of guys from another group came in and said, "Oh my lord, we heard a pedal steel guitar in your band," and we were like, "What is that?" Aww. And so, 
We're proud of that. Well, I think that that's kind of a testament, really, to what Eric is building. And he mentioned that that yeah. night. He was there and he yeah. said, I came to town to play on Broadway. I wanted to do original songs and I wanted to do real country music. And nobody wanted to hear that when I came to town. So I had to go to Printer's Alley. They wanted him to do cover songs, right? Wanted him to do cover songs. And he said, that's why it's so important that I built this because I want to bring that music back to Broadway. I want people to be able to do originals and we want some real country music with pedal steel and yeah. that's why you guys are there that's that's yeah. amazing and it's not unfamiliar to you to have a gig like this growing up the way you did for people who are meeting you hearing you for the first time yeah. give them a backstory on these kids from Pahrump, nevada and their father who was such a huge influence gosh in 1999 when i was four and matt was eight our uh, our dad and mom moved out to a little town called Pahrump, nevada a lady named jan jensen bought a club called the stage stop and uh and arkansas home. was home before that right? arkansas was home yeah <laughs> yes sir i was yeah i was born in arkansas he was born in california but we were being raised in arkansas both at the time and this lady called and said i bought a i bought a bar called the stage stop and you know, I'm needing help because I'm going to lose this place if you don't move out here because I can't get a band that interacts with the crowd and can keep a crowd every night. And uh, she hired my dad, and we moved out there in a little single wide back behind the stage stop that she owned. That was He was like, my dad said, you know, we need a place to live until and get out there and get adjusted. So we lived in a single wide, and our dad played five nights a week at, at the stage shop, and that's where we grew up. And we what was his name in his band? Uh, Jack Reeves and the All-Americans. Okay. And, yeah, he just played just old – bar band country music you know so what are you guys doing as a four and an eight year old and then you're growing up years while well you, while your dad's playing these gigs basically going crazy inside of that bar we were just you know we'd be shooting pool and everybody'd be grabbing us throwing us around and we'd be drinking cherry cokes and like we just had a full run of the place at the time How about yeah. That? yeah it was virgin uh, daiquiris yeah virgin daiquiris <laughs> Those were, those were pretty good. They were great. They made a great virgin daiquiri. Yeah. You know what? Surprisingly, I just had a real daiquiri for the first time, and I told my girlfriend, I said, wow, this thing is not near as good as the virgin daiquiri. <laughs> well, sure, that alcohol kills out the shit. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That yeah. alcohol slowly kills the innocence. It really yeah. does. It really does. And did you guys do a tour a couple of years back with Justin Moore, speaking of traditional country? We did, yes, yes, sir. We played yeah. a, a long stint with Justin. We started in April and went to the end of the year on his Country On It tour. So, yeah. did it have anything to do with the Arkansas connection, or did you... no? That was the Scott connection because oh, okay. uh, Justin's uh, manager Joey Gonzalez uh, oh, yeah. was he was Scott's road manager uh, back when Blue Scott County. was in Blue County. Hey, and I so, asked him. I said, "When's Blue County here. coming back?" And yeah, he just laughed. I was like, "I'm not kidding." I know they're not great. Either. They, yeah. were they were like the soundtrack to my childhood. Loved yeah. And for people who don't know, that Scott Reeves was in that duo. Yeah. And then, of course, a wonderful acting career that you may want to comment on. Oh, too. Yeah. yeah. Scott's got a new movie out right now called. Push it, push it. Called, uh, it's called Someone Like You. It's available in like 1,800 theaters across the country. Y'all go see it. Uh, yeah. They yeah, just it's did a, a red carpet premiere here, yeah. I think, for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Arden Franklin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Karen Kingsbury. Uh, it's a Karen Kingsbury movie. Remember, and she came in and told us about mm -hmm. it. And yeah. uh, she's great. Karen's Charlie wonderful. Matos goes back to uh, watching soap operas daytime with Scott oh, with his grandmother in yeah. Rhode Island, right, Charlie? Stories is what she called him. Watch Her my stories. stories. Yeah. 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 And it's amazing. 40 years later, how many of those same characters are still on those soap operas? Seriously, it's like For some yeah. people, it's like a lifetime gig. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like Victor Newman is still on The Young yeah. and the Restless. You know? yeah, Scott's so, wife is yeah. uh, in California right now uh -huh. shooting some stuff for Days of Our Lives, yeah. and uh -huh. she and started in like she's back. Yeah. 83 or 4 uh -huh. doing the soaps. That was my grandmother's soap, and so I grew up watching Jennifer. Wow. Yes, I, oh that, that was Jennifer funny. Horton. Jennifer Horton. <laughs> yes, it's hysterical. I love Missy. She's so, did anybody famous ever come through, like a Buck Owens or a Merle Haggard or any of those West Coast cats, and play the stage stop? Oh, where your father was playing? Yeah, Hank Thompson. Oh my goodness! We grew up with Hank and the Brazos Valley Boys. Yep. Amen. He brought every one of them. Smokey yeah. the Bar. That's right. And he had that very distinct. Oh. Almost like his spoken nuts. word thing. Oh, 100%. One he, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got in the car one night with him. Our dad picked him up in Tulsa for a gig that just a one-off thing they were doing. I was about three years old, and I had just learned those Oklahoma Hills where I was born, and oh. for 90 minutes straight, I sang it to Hank Thompson. <laughs> Hank looked at Dad and said, Jack, one day that kid may be a singer. 
So tell us, uh, before we feature new music, about the residency. When people can see you, what night you're there. At Chiefs, by the way, again, downtown. We will be at Chiefs uh, Monday and Tuesday night, 10.30 to 2.30 a.m. And Wednesday, is it 2 to 5.30? I, I, yeah, that we'll sounds We'll go right. with that. It might, you might get there 30 minutes early, but that's okay. Uh, and Thursday is 6.30 to 10.30. Yeah. That's cool. And yeah, well, four nights a week. And uh, if a girl like looks a lot like Kelly Sutton standing up there next to the stage, just go up and introduce yourself. That's right. That's yeah. right. She's drinking. Yeah. She's drinking those virgin daiquiris. <laughs> you know she plays a mean tambourine. I really yeah. do. Yes. Yeah. Just put yeah. me in. Like it's in the wrong I love that. Yeah, I got it. So well, we have a stage name for her: Nicks. Donna yes. Darlene and her yeah. tambourine. Oh, I like that. Uh, yeah, uh, Don, Donna D. Uh, <laughs> New song we're going to premiere. Donna D sounds so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. we could go with Double D. It's <laughs> steady work. That's exactly where my head went. Let's just put it's steady work. Right? <laughs> Phil O'Donnell. Phil O'Donnell. Phil Billy. Oh, yes, Phil, Phil Billy. Man, he is. I mean, he's played on everything, but he's written a ton of songs oh and produced. This guy can do everything. What was it like working with him? It was incredible yeah. getting to work yeah. with Phil. I mean, we uh, we met him on. We were on Craig Morgan's last tour, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the God Family Country Tour, and we got to meet Phil because Craig's guitar player had just quit and uh, to pursue a solo career, and Phil is out on the road with Craig. And the first night we met him, it's like we came off a stage, and we had to, we were going to go out and take pictures and talk to everybody. And he took our guitars from us and goes, I'll put these away. You guys get out front. You know, and I'm like, Whoa. Oh, I'm a, what a, what a hosp Jesus, hospitable yeah. human. Yeah. The and uh, He's the best. Yeah, so yeah, we just immediately struck up a friendship, and every night before the show, he would come hang out with us, or we would go out over on their bus and visit, and uh, and then he came up to us after a show one night. He goes, I'd, I'd like to produce you guys on that Problem Fitting In song, and, and we started going over to the house and writing, and then he produced that, and we're getting ready to go in the studio uh, with him and some of the guys that have been recording on Ronnie Dunn's stuff mm -hmm. and uh, do a few... Full bands, you know, bigger production things. Did you write Problem Fitting In? I did. You did? Yeah. Are we going to play it for the world right now? Oh, I'd love that. Let's do it. <laughs> More Coffee, Country, and Cody is on WSM. In studio with Matt and Cole, the Reeves brothers. They are back and playing Chiefs on a regular basis these days. We'll get those hours again. Problem Fitting In. Boy, that's a great story about traditional country music lovers this morning, huh? Cole, where, 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 where were you when you wrote that? you remember? Did you write it in one sitting? Uh, yeah, I did. I wrote that, and uh, we were on a trip, and we had played at a place called the Saddle and Spurs Saloon in Las Vegas, and uh, our parents lived in Pahrump. We were in Arkansas at the time, and on our way back home to our parents' house, uh, I started talking. Matt goes, it was 3 or 4 in the morning, and Matt said, you know, I bet you wouldn't know anybody on top 20 billboard right now any of the artists because we just don't listen never listen to new country and i said oh i said trust me i i'm not that far out of the loop and uh he goes well, look it up and i looked it up and he was right i didn't know anybody <laughs> thought i thought it was gonna be all the people i grew up on and uh <laughs> it wasn't so anyway and we got home and i told matt i said i'm gonna write a song and i get back tonight about it and then our dad had just been diagnosed with alzheimer's and so i kind of just turned into more of a life story than yeah than just about country music but yeah that was where there's yeah. a sweet reference to him in the lyric of the song if people were listening a little bit earlier Thank did you, you recently do a speaking of lovers of traditional country music a merle haggard tribute show we surely did, did. yeah where was that uh, we did it in Northwest Arkansas at the Meteor Guitar Gallery, and we got to take a guy named Eugene Moles with us, who was Merle Haggard's first uh, sub replacement for Roy Nichols oh, wow. uh, on guitar when he was 17. Uh, Roy asked him to go out when Roy was going to retire, and so he played guitar for us, and we just, yeah, it was a great show. It was, it was a sold-out thing there, and it was our ninth year doing it. We've done it every year since the night that Merle Haggard passed away on April 6th. On his, his birthday. His birthday. And his death date. Yeah. You know, it was and, wild. And the one he predicted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so what are you going to play for us first? We're going to do a song right now that uh, I just wrote this. Phil Billy has been honest because he's like, you guys have got enough slow stuff to 
cut a hundred albums of it. He's like, you got to write something fast. And so <laughs> I was sitting in Arkansas and there's this little bar right there on the state line, uh, of Missouri in Arkansas called Charlie's red barn. And, uh, used to be a joke that you couldn't go in there. You'd get stabbed. And Cole and I went in there and it was nothing but a bunch of little old men <laughs> who probably been playing a this, card, yeah, game. playing card games. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Yeah. But they all have pocket knives. But they all have pocket knives. Yeah. Did you them. ask to see their stab wounds? Exactly, yeah. 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 They were really only 40 years old. They just looked rough. Yeah. They just had them at the bar in 20 yeah. years. That's Stop funny. Down. So I wrote this uh, about about that place, and we're going to do it right now. I think we're going to cut this thing with Bill Billy just a couple weeks. Love it. Woo! Thank the you. Reeves oh, Brothers God. and Donna Darlene and her tambourine. <laughs> I was missing it, man. I could have gotten into that. Oh, there. that's a good one. That's a tambourine song. Really <laughs> now we've had a, we've had a lot of artists through the years mentioned that you know early morning radio singing in the morning is not the easiest thing. But how is picking in the morning? My gosh, that was impressive. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Charlie. I play just as bad in the morning as I do at night. <laughs> and who were your guitar heroes? Your musical heroes oh. in that respect. Mine personally was uh, James Burton. Oh, uh, going, going into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I know. I know. Way overdue, man. He's played on so many amazing records. But James Burton, Marty Stewart, uh, Clarence White, some guys like that. Of course, Roy Nichols and Don Rich, all the kind of the West Coast guys were. Yeah. That was my influence on guitar. How about you, Cole? Uh, Reggie Young and uh, Glenn Campbell and Albert Lee, those guys, you know. Yeah, Names big, Reggie, big Reggie Young fan now. Yeah, good for you. So tell them again where you're going to be uh, at Chiefs, what nights you're there, and your hours, please. We will be at Chiefs Monday, Tuesday night, 10.30 to 2.30 a.m. We will be there on Wednesday, which is tonight, uh, 2, two, or two to, to 5.30. And then tomorrow night, Thursday, Thursday is 6.30 to 10.30. So happy for you, man. Yeah. Well, That's a great can't, gig. Can't thank you guys. And there's enough. a full barbecue restaurant up on level five. Did have y'all? No, no, it, no. They have never let us up on level. You five. haven't been there. We haven't been past level four. <laughs> yeah. No. You know, they, there's, you a go go that, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people they shouldn't let on level six. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Will the defendant please yeah. rise? I know. <laughs> what was it, Alexa? Play the, the no. chair. Play the chair. <laughs> That was that was from oh. Ernest. <laughs> uh, but I will tell you, the barbecue up there, I give it two thumbs up. It's phenomenal. Do we have beef so and good. and pork? They had beef, pork. They also had uh, freshly baked little hand pies, like apple little yeah, yeah fried any. pies. Mm. So delicious. And you know your stuff when it comes I to do. barbecue because I you do. you you got a badge. You're like official. Mm -hmm. What I are am, you? I am a KCBS certified barbecue judge. You heard that? Yeah. She Take went that. to Kansas school City for it. She just told me all about yeah. it. I did. She knows the difference between good barbecue and the McRib. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> That's a true story. But yeah. You I know mean, though, at two a.m. the McRib it'll get you through. It'll get you through. <laughs> a lot of stuff will get you through. At 2 hey, yeah. We were just talking about the bagels back, so these two are headed to the now, yeah, was say, the bagels. Is a whole different story. Yeah. yeah. That's Wait a minute. Whole other world. McDonald's has bagels. Yeah. Oh now they do. They they went away. Made me mad. I quit going. Because they took the bagels away. It was, it was my favorite. Night. Yeah, oh, it was. <laughs> it's that, it's, it's, uh, it's the whatever sauce condiment sauce. they use on the bagel okay. that is delish. Oh, oh it's my bagel gosh. sauce, man. I'm a native New Englander, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh -oh. In the in the fall, they have McLobster. They have the uh, lobster. You're lying. Sandwich. Right no, now, I, totally. kid you. Google it, McLobster, and it's really it's like nine bucks. It's the most expensive thing ever on a McDonald's menu, but it's pretty decent. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. is that because they don't they freight somebody nationwide they can't spell cohog like cohog? <laughs> well the shell gets in the so, way on that one, I think. Let's so. just call it lobster. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that way all the marquee yeah. guys will get it right. <laughs> Play us one more before you go. All right, I'm gonna do uh I'll do a song. I uh our old steel player and I were riding down the road one night, a guy named Caleb Mello, and uh we were it was funny. We were dating. We were dating a uh, two sisters. So we would it worked because he didn't have his own car, so he could ride with me whenever I went to see my girlfriend. <laughs> and uh, we were on our way, and we started talking. I said, "Man, this country music thing is not panning out for us because we just can't get our style of country music to catch." And uh, he's like, "Oh, you got to keep up with it." I said, "It's just crazy to think." I said, "I couldn't imagine going into work every night and people just being like playing." The music we're playing when it was brand new, you know, and everybody being hot and into it. Yeah. And uh, 
I said, you know, I mean, like our dad, I said, my dad was playing top 40 country and now we're playing 40 year old top 40 country <laughs> and uh i and we started talking i said man that that's got a ring to it i'm gonna write that so i got back and and i wrote it so i'll do that it's a thing called 40 year old top 40 country it makes me wish Vern gosden were still alive so he could sing that with you oh man. huh wouldn't that be perfect <laughs> i love Vern. That's Matt and Cole Reeves Brothers on Coffee Country and Cody, and they've got a residency. And you can go see them, hear them, visit with them. Terrific guys. Eric Church's Chiefs, downtown Nashville. Thanks for getting up. Or we'll be in out late, up early. Now available, new episodes of My Opry Debut, including... Tonight, he's stepping into the circle for the very first time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Austin Snow! the rookie room right this is the rookie room i just hope to leave in the circle a piece of myself and a piece of my story that hopefully resonates with everybody else and somebody can take something and relate to it whether that's you know a hardship or a, a good thing or in all the in between i just like to tell as many stories as i can thank y'all so much for having me my name is austin still y'all be good watch well, a full episode of my opry debut with austin lots more of those too from those first moments in that historic circle for different artists are available on the Opry's YouTube channel. But again, that was Austin Snell, S-N-E-L-L, -L, Austin Snell. And uh, Kelly Sutton, she mm -hmm. is on the way with entertainment just a little bit. I just a few hours ago, <laughs> among the people that I was with, Brad Paisley made a surprise appearance at mm -hmm. Belmont's Music Business 50th anniversary celebration at the Grand Ole Opry. Tricia Yearwood was there. Haley Witters was there. It was just jam-packed with big-time stars that all went to school there. Tyler mm -hmm. Hubbard wrapped up the night. Mm -hmm. He's got a new album coming out on Friday. And the uh, question has now been answered as to why Brad Paisley, while matriculating at Belmont, got a D in guitar well first of all i was i went to belmont as a junior i transferred in wanted to be in nashville in the worst way and everybody said that's the best way to get to nashville and it really is if you're a kid of college age or if you just want to go back to school for any reason and you want to be in the music business this is the best school you could go to it really is i stand here proof of that i got a d in guitar <laughs> marty crumb Professor Marty Crum. If he's here tonight, screw you, Marty Crum. No, I... I no, no, Mar Marty was great. I, I got a D because I didn't go to class, and my dad about killed me. He's like, all this money, we send you down there, and you get a D in guitar math, sure, but a guitar, you know. So I, I ended up going and... Uh, Getting it changed to a C by, uh, well, let's just not talk about it. <laughs> Bribing, you know, long before college scandals and things like that. No, I, uh, I, I basically, he made me promise. He said, if you promise you won't skip another class, I'll give you a C. And that's why I'm here tonight. <laughs> that's there it Brad is. Brad Paisley's story, and he's sticking to it. <laughs> How Brad Paisley changed a D to a C <laughs> in guitar at Belmont. Oh, well, they don't ask for the report card when you graduate. <laughs> no one cares yeah. what you made. Well, we're talking entertainment headlines. Congratulations, Reba McIntyre at 69 years old, just signed with Dove for a beauty campaign. This is really cool, and I'm so happy for her. You know, she admits, she's like, hey, I grew up in Oklahoma. If I got my hair washed and my teeth brushed, I felt like I was doing pretty good. I never really put on makeup or, you know, did any of that. So she's how old now? Says she is 69. Okay. Is that right? It, yeah, I it, guess that, so. I know she's a little bit older than me. I thought I she was. Just my goodness, I I didn't realize, but that doesn't matter. She uh -huh. looks fantastic. Yeah, back March twenty eighth was her okay. birthday. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, happy birthday, Reba! And here's a new Dove campaign to go along with it. Dove is doing a huge thing about real beauty, and they have made a commitment saying we will no, we will never use AI generated anything. So. She has signed on for that. We'll see what happens coming up. Speaking of real beauty, our friend Gwen Stefani, who is gorgeous, looks good in any situation, even riding on a tractor. She's actually doing a collaboration with her old band, no doubt. So they're going to be back together again. They're going to be at Coachella. First time in 25 years, is that right? No, 25 years since their debut album, I should say. But 
it is going to be a long time. It's been a long time since they've come mm-hmm. together. So they're going to be playing. But she said she also feels really at home out on her farm with Blake Shelton in Oklahoma. Blake said she's got her own tractor. She's really, really good at digging in the dirt and planting things. In fact, she's probably a better farmer than I am, is what he said. Now, she has her own tractor, but she doesn't know how to run it yet. He said, one of these days, we're going to teach her how to crank it, mm-hmm. and she can drive it by herself. But e- easy on that clutch. Easy on that. Easy. Easy yeah. on that clutch. Uh, by the way, when you mentioned the tractors, uh, in the tractors, the band came to mind. Earlier, I referenced this. Tim Dubois signed Steve Ripley and the tractors from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Tim said he would get this map in the mail every day. They had timed it out so that every day a piece of mail would arrive. And there was a map from Tulsa to Nashville. And every day this little tractor would be a little farther along in its journey to Nashville <laughs> until they got here. And he signed them in 1994. When I got to town 30 years ago, they had a thing called Baby Likes to Rock It Like a Boogie Woogie Choo Choo Train. Okay. That was a big hit record for him. That's so funny. And Steve died uh, tragically from cancer just mm-hmm. before uh, the pandemic kicked in in 2020. Oh, wow. So anyway, but yeah. I just, uh, when you talk about the tractors. Oklahoma tractors, that came to mind. Here they come. Yep. All right, new exhibit happening at Ryman. This is very cool. The Elvis exhibit, 70 years since he performed the one and only time ever on the Grand Ole Opry. That was on the Ryman stage. So with this new exhibition, you're going to see all kinds of cool stuff, including some really phenomenal pictures. Look at some of these that we are sharing with you. And we're going to talk more about this tomorrow as well. Um, We have somebody coming in from the Ryman who's going to give us a lowdown on the entire exhibit. But that Opry performance was on October 2nd, 1954. So this is included with your daytime pass. If you're going to see the Ryman and do some of the tours, this will be included. You can find all the information at Ryman.com. Did you say Ernest Tubb was the only person in town that was nice to him? Yeah, because apparently he did the Midnight Jamboree after the <laughs> Opry on his on his. And that was visit. it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, mm-hmm. well, I hate that we weren't as welcoming, but that's all right. He was just a little misunderstood. Mm-hmm. Bill okay. Monroe grew to like him. Oh, he did? Yeah, because oh. he made a lot of money on Blue Moon of Kentucky. So, oh, okay, yeah, 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 that's yeah. true. That makes is sense. Is that the, that boy that cut my song? I like that. Yes, it is, Mr. Monroe. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> go, go down the mailbox and check for me. Yeah. <laughs> See what we got. Might have something in there. Lee Bryce posted this picture, so I had to get to the bottom of it. He's got drinking buddies. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he's corrupting the little sweet Haley Witters, but there she is, right in the middle of it with I'll Nate tell you Smith. What, she's corruptible. That's how. That's, that's how, how it is. Yeah, yeah. Country yeah. music will do that to you. <laughs> so Nate Smith uh, and uh, Haley Witters are now drinking buddies with Lee Bryce. They've got a song coming out. It's a celebratory toast to the folks who help take the sting out of a bad day or make a good day even better. There you go. Haley was at the Opry with the. She's a Belmont girl. That's she right. was over And she and Trisha Yearwood. She had Trisha do a surprise walk on, and they do edit together That's last nice. night. Hey, we're back to wrap it up. It is. Uh, it's Wednesday, right? I think so. Because oh, I was all morning. I was yeah. just at the Opry, and that yeah. was Tuesday. Yeah. So mm-hmm. tomorrow is Thursday. I'm back at the Opry with Larry Wayne Gatlin and his brothers Steve and Rudy. And guess what? What? Forty years in the making, baby. They got a documentary. They got an album. They got a book. Sawyer Brown is in the house All in the spotlight right. tomorrow night. Yeah. Erin Enderlin, who's coming to see us on yep. her way to Opry Country Classics, who just got the new cut on Trisha Yearwood, put it in a song. The Malpest Brothers, Charlie McCoy, and that is tomorrow night's Opry Country Classics. What yes. you got tomorrow before we go? Ashley McBride tells us about the devil I know. And the devil you don't tomorrow. Yeah.